Good morning, everyone. It's Tuesday of the 33rd week. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. You know, today's gospel reminds us that Jesus came to seek out the lost. People that are confused, people that are angry, all those kinds of issues that we have as human beings. So, as we begin, let's reflect for a moment on what it truly means to be loved by God. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You were seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us for the sin we have committed. Bring each one of us home to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, the strength of those who hope in you graciously hear our pleas, since without you mortal frailty can do nothing. Grant that in us always we have the help of your grace, that in following your commands we may please you by our resolve and our deeds, through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, heard the angel saying to me, to the angel of the church in Sardis, write this. The one who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars says this, I know your works. You have the reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Be watchful and strengthen with what is left, which is going to die. For I have not found your works complete in the sight of my God. Remember then how you accepted and heard. Keep it and repent. If you are not watchful, I will come like a thief, and you will never know at what hour I will come upon you. However, you have a few people in Sardis who have not soiled their garments. They will walk with me dressed in white because they are worthy. The victor will thus be dressed in white, and I will never erase his name from the book of life, but will acknowledge his name in the presence of my Father and of his angels. Whoever has ears ought to hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the angel of the Lord in Laodicea, write this, The Amen, the faithful and true witness, the source of God's creation, says this, I know your works. I know that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. For you say, I am rich and affluent and have no need of anything, and yet do not realize that you are wretched, pitiable, poor, blind, and naked. I advise you to buy from me gold refined by fire so that you may be rich and white garments to put on so that your shameful nakedness may not be exposed and by ointment to smear on your eyes so that you may see. Those whom I love I reprove and chastise, be earnest therefore and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, then I will enter his house and dine with him and he with me. I will give the victor the right to sit with me on my throne as I myself first won the victory and sit with my father on his throne. Whoever has ears ought to hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The word of the Lord. I will seat the victor beside me on my throne. I will seat the victor beside me on my throne. He who walks blamelessly and does justice, who thinks the truth in his heart and slanders not with his tongue. I will seat the victor beside me on my throne. Who harms not his fellow man, nor takes up a reproach against his neighbor, by whom the reprobate is despised, while he honors those who fear the Lord. I will set the victor beside me on my throne. Who lends not his money at usury and accepts no bribe against the innocent, he who does these things shall never be disturbed. I will seat the victor beside me on my throne. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. At that time, Jesus came to Jericho and intended to pass through the town. Now there was a man named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector and also a wealthy man, who was seeking to see who Jesus was. But he could not see him because of the crowd, for he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree in order to see Jesus, who was about to pass that way. When he reached that place, Jesus looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down quickly, for today I must stay at your house. And he came down quickly and received him with joy. When they saw this, they began to grumble, saying, He has gone to stay at the house of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Behold, half of my possessions, Lord, I shall give to the poor. And if I have extorted anything from anyone, 
I shall repay it four times over. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a descendant of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save what was lost. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, everyone. So, you know, the story of Zacchaeus, we've kind of heard it before, and, and I'd just like to go over a few things from the story. And it's, it's like three things. One is, you know, when Zacchaeus, Jesus wanted to stay at his house, the people grumbled. Why? Because they were judging Zacchaeus. They didn't know that he was going to repent. They didn't know what was in his heart. So I think we need to refrain from judgment of people. We need to refrain from that. And, and you know, let God do the judging. Let that to him. The second thing is, Zacchaeus in the story, he did whatever he had to do to see Jesus. You know, what do we do to see Jesus, to have Jesus in our lives? And I think, you know, if we, we think about it, we come to Mass, we watch Mass, we do those things, we pray. I think we need to continue to do that and expand upon that a little bit. When we're in dealing with other folks, when we're doing different things, we share our faith with people. We pray to God at every turn. We give thanks for things. And I think the third thing is that Zacchaeus searched and gave forgiveness for his sins, for all the things he did. You know, Zacchaeus was a tax collector, a wealthy man. How did he get wealthy? Probably by cheating people and paying, you know, extorting extra taxes and keeping them for himself. So I think, you know, he repented. That's why the judgment part of it, we can't judge. He repented, he gave back, he restored things. And I think we do that in our lives. So I thought about that and there was this little 10 things to make us happy. Because Zacchaeus was searching for something, he searched out Jesus, he became happier when he restored things, when he, he was not judged by other folks. So I'd like to share that with you. 10 things for a happier life. Give something away, no strings attached, just give it away. Do a kindness and don't lord it over people, forget about it, do your kindness and move on. Spend a few minutes with the elderly, the aged. Their experience is priceless. Look intently in the face of a baby or a young child, because that's the future. That's life itself. Laugh often. It's life's lubricant. You know, don't take things too seriously. Laugh and enjoy things. Give thanks. And maybe, you know, Jesus said forgiveness. How many times do you forgive? Seventy times seven. I think thanksgiving and thanks for things in your life we have to do thousands of times a day. Give thanks for every little thing that goes on in your life. Pray to help find our way, to help keep our way, to help keep connection with God. Work with vim and vigor. Your work means a lot. Take pride in your work. Do a good job. Plan as though you'll live forever, because it, we will, because of Jesus. Live as though you'll die tomorrow, because sometime you will. So it's, I think, those two contradictory things. Think about living forever, but think about your life is precious and short. So think about those things. And I think, you know, that, that one part of the Zacchaeus story where he seeked out Jesus is the most important part. So continue to seek out God, to seek out Jesus. Pray, keep in touch. God bless my brothers and sisters. For our church, may it always be a community of love and mercy and forgiveness. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those who are lost, may they be found and transformed by God. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those who are suffering from any sicknesses, whether physical or mental, may God comfort and heal them. Let us pray to the Lord. For all of our families, may they be free from anxiety. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those who have died, may they come to share in the resurrection of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we ask you to continue to bless our lives on this journey back home to you through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to give you, which earth is given and human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to give you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Friends, let us pray that our gifts will be acceptable to God, our loving Father. Oh God, who in the offerings presented here, provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food, renewing us with your sacrament. 
Grant that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in mind or body through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, here's the word to whom you made the universe, the Savior who sent to redeem us. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake, he opened his arms on the cross. He put an end to death and revealed the resurrection. And this he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. And so we join our loved ones in heaven as we pray this hymn of an ending praise. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke the bread, gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. Similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection. Until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Joseph our Bishop. Remember Fred and Rose Champy, Anne and John Eldemar, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who are united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection for all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that, together with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Joseph, her husband, the apostles, the martyrs, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. <clears throat> Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. <clears throat> give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy we may be free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait with joyful hope the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of the church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of our Lord be with each one of you. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. At this reception of Eucharist, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so it may bring about unity in your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May God's blessing truly guide this journey, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Have a good day, everyone. Same to you.